Hey everyone, welcome back. This is a bit of a surprise trip for me this week. Uh, due to the incompetence of our contractor, I get to go out and run for another week. I just got back from that short Pennsylvania run a couple days ago. He was supposed to have people there Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Somebody showed up Wednesday and then surprise, surprise, no one's available to work the Thursday and Friday before a holiday weekend. Uh, they demoed our bathroom a month ago and our vanity is still on a ship at sea somewhere. So we told them not to bother even scheduling anything until the vanity is here and they're ready to proceed, which gives me at least this week to run and probably a little bit more. So I jumped on the load board, found a 34 foot reflection fifth wheel going to Silverdale, Washington at 201 a mile. Grabbed that right away. And then yesterday, I broke the trip in half up to Indiana, stopped in Indianapolis at my wonderful mother-in-law's house with her mother, had dinner with them, spent, spent some time, and of course came away with some of grandma's homemade chocolate chip cookies. They're not necessarily good for the blood sugar, but they're made with love, so I think that counteract, counteracts some of that. Um, I don't know if there's been, been any studies done on it, but there should be because they're delicious. So, got up this morning after being kept awake till about 1.30 by fireworks last night because it was the 2nd of July, so you have to start early. And made my way up to Middlebury. The yard is still packed, so we're looking good going into whatever slowdowns may be coming up. And looked into my reflection was the only reflection fifth wheel on row four so I got hooked up real quick I think the pulling guys were having their competition whenever they put this in about who could get closest to the unit next to them I couldn't even open the side panel to get to the landing gear switch to get hooked up so I had to hook up to a bumper pull that was to the side of it move that out of the way and get hooked up and out but quick and easy just the typical dings and scratches that the units have. I don't know why they can't attach a ladder to one of these without dinging it up, but everyone seems to have some marks on them. So I'm heading west on 80. I'm probably just going to stop at Iowa 80 tonight, the world's largest truck stop. Um, I'm going to stop early, probably about 4, 3.30 or so. The last trip out to Washington, I was able to get it five days in where I got at least five miles walking and running around the truck stops or the streets around where we were. So I'm going to try to continue that on this trip. Pull in there early. There should be plenty of spots. Do my laps. Um, take a shower. And uh, get settled in for the night. And then head on out. So I may have a small backhaul for part of the trip coming home lined up. So that'll be nice. Not sure yet, we're still working on it. But uh, we'll see how it goes. So I just survived 80 West through Indiana and the first part of Illinois. And uh, I may need to use that chiropractor at Iowa 80 because I don't know what they're doing there, but there isn't an even stretch of road there. And they're, they're doing more construction. They've got two middle lanes of the westbound closed off and one lane on either side of that and it's just a mess so if that's the worst of my trip then I'll be doing all right so I'm gonna ride for another hour or so and I'll turn you on pulling into Iowa 80 so you can see what it's like parking in there exit 284 on interstate 80 west in Iowa coming up to the Iowa 80 truck stop, billed as the largest truck stop in the world. So as we're going to call it a day, today, I'm going to go in and get, my, get a few miles walking around this place, but get a shower, get some good dinner, be ready to go again tomorrow. Well, you've actually got Iowa 80 here, there's a pilot across the street, a full island, and another one off on the other side of the interstate. 
But if you're coming in with an RV, you take this first entrance, which doesn't look like you should do, and come straight in here across the parking lot, past the car fuel islands. go past in front of the old time pumps to the RV spots. And we'll try to make our way back there if this guy knows what he's doing. And he just stopped blocking the way and telling me to move around him, but I'm not going around him with this camper on here. But I guess he's just going to sit there. Somebody coming out the wrong way. Oh, the joy of parking lots. But this is nice as the RV parking trailers, nice pull through spots. And this is where we'll spend the night today. A few other transporters here. So I'm gonna get the truck situated and uh, take you for a little tour inside. So here we are at IO80, as they say, the world's largest truck stop. So we're gonna go in, give a quick little view of what they've got there. See if there's anything anybody wants to see. It's a good place to stop. But as you come in over here to the left side is uh, kind of a little grocery section, snacks, food, fountain drinks. All along here. Along the back there is all the fast food, Wendy's, Taco Bell, Pizza Hut, Orange Julius. And Dairy Queen. Gotta have Dairy Queen. So the food court. A lot of Iowa centric clothing here. Cats and hogs, corn, trinkets. One of the best things is right when you come in here to the right of the doors is their local cheese curds. These are delicious and I'll be getting some of those before we go. Probably the garlic urban cheddar. The white, white cheddar are good and there's a ranch cheddar. That's really good as well. So I'll pick up one or two of those on the way out. And you make it off to the right side of the store. You got more clothes. You've got a truck advertising the IO80 Trucking Museum, which is right across the street. I know several people that would love to have this power wagon. Coonskin hats, always in season. And then this is where their pure genus, they put the toys right by the restrooms. So the family's going in and out of the bathrooms, the kids are gonna see it, and you're gonna have to get something. So whoever set up their floor plan here knew what they were doing. Nice World War II era Willie's Jeep. Kind of home door decor. It's a restaurant. Normally open 24 hours. I think it, they're starting to shut down still because of COVID. And 
and what stop at a truck stop would be complete without a leather hat and a duster because you are going to be crossing the plains here. So get some more clothing, walking sticks. And you have to get a sword or a stun gun. Absolutely. Anytime you come. But down here, they've got an embroidery shop. And they've even got a design service. If you need something designed, you can email them pictures. And that, and in a couple days, they'll get back to you. And you can have it put on hats or t-shirts, whatever you need. So speaking of that, if anybody knows a good logo design company, I'm looking to get one done if you can throw it in the comments I would appreciate it but if you need it for your truck chances are it's here need to kill some flies bug assault but if you need a steering wheel if you need lights sunshades if you need it for your truck you chances are you can get it here and then if we go back over to the other side downstairs here you can get the electronics you need a refrigerator get it here satellite TV receiver they've got several inverters power cords pretty much anything you can need so you get your inverters Satellite TVs, Bluetooth headsets, antennas, and we'll work our way back up to the top level. Any cooking supplies? Plenty. Movies for your DVDs. All sorts of different size refrigerators, coolers, freezers. And you go upstairs to more of the services. Right at the top of the stairs here is a chiropractor. An adjustment is $40. I had one done coming through a couple months ago. It was the first time I'd been to a chiropractor. It was an interesting experience. Don't know if I'd do it again, but it gave me a little relief in my shoulder. But he is closed for a 4th of July weekend. But he's there if you need his information. And then around here is the showers and the laundry. The nice thing about the dryers here is they're very, very large and it's not a fixed fee. You can put it in by the quarter and just go until you're done. A lot of the truck stops, it's a flat $2.50 or $3 fee to wash and dry. This one will let you dry as little as you need. And you come into your showers back here. And they have a movie theater up there, but it hasn't been open any time that I've been here. So, that's the upstairs. Oh, we have a barber and a dentist. Pretty much if you need it done, you can get it done here. So, IO80 in a nutshell, quite a place. So one of the easiest ways to save money while you're out here delivering campers and by saving money, have more money at the end of the trip to move over than your bank account, is to prepare your own food and bring it with you. Eating out is incredibly expensive. Um, getting a burger and a drink at a fast food place is going to be $10 or more. 
a lot of times um, doing a salad at a restaurant if you add chicken or steak or anything to it you're close to 15 to 20 dollars um, I met a friend uh, for breakfast yesterday and it was a kind of expensive place where we had breakfast and my omelet was 17 dollars before tax and tip so I can make a lot of food at home for 17 dollars um, and I know what's in it and it's probably a little bit healthier so here's a quick little rundown of some of the stuff that I bring and uh, how, to, how I prepare it and I try to save some money. So for breakfast, a lot of times I'll just do bars. Uh, just do some bars for kind of higher protein, hopefully lower carbs. Um, those and a bottle of glucerna get me going in the morning. Um, other mornings, we can do, and stuff's not going to show up that great, but um, there's a bag full of scrambled eggs with bacon and cheese and a couple trips ago I tried those Jimmy Dean breakfast bowls where it's got eggs, sausage, potatoes, cheese in it and those are three four dollars a piece and I'm sure loaded with sodium in that so at home we just took some eggs scrambled them up made some bacon cut that up put it in it added some cheese and for maybe a dollar and a half two dollars I've got a serving for breakfast take that put it into one of the tins and put that into the cooker and cook that for about 30 minutes and nice warm eggs good stuff going along with the cooker uh, for dinners a lot of times I will pre-make food at home and bring it. So this is uh, spaghetti and meatballs. Make it in the Instapot. Doesn't take very long. Throw it into the into the tin. Freeze it. It keeps in the refrigerator really well. Helps keep everything cold. Put it in here for about 30-40 minutes. Stir it up a little bit. Put it in for a few more minutes and you've got a good spaghetti dinner. And yes, notice my fancy white tablecloth here because this is a fine dining establishment um, for lunches and also for some dinners you can do salads so lettuce cut it up break it up put it into a ziploc baggie with a piece of paper towel and then cook up some chicken breasts chicken tenders um, cook that up put it into a baggie bring that along some cheese and some dressing. Bring along a container you can reuse and you've got your own chicken Caesar salad for just a couple of dollars instead of 15 or 20 at a restaurant. And again, I know what's in it. A little bit healthier. For lunches, I do a lot of wraps because you can just reach into the cooler, grab them, and eat those as you go. And I'll use the Mission low carb wraps for those. A little bit of mayonnaise and then I buy the sandwich meat I've got some turkey breast and roast beef I'll make a bunch of them at home and bring those along and then as I eat them I'll make fresh ones and taking the meats out of the plastic containers that come in saves a lot of space makes it a little bit easier uh, those that's kind of been my main staples to eat but it's certainly a lot cheaper than eating out uh, like I said $17 for an omelet. Um, I like to snack while I'm going. I'm trying to stay away from the peanut M&Ms. So get some cashews. Munch on those as I go. Um, got it, got my Yeti. I'll go in, get a cup of ice. A lot of truck stops, it'll be free. Some will charge you 50 cents. Um, bring along sodas or water, Gatorade, because uh, it's all cheaper to get those at home than it is here at the truck stops and just keep replenishing those in the cooler refrigerator as you go. But that's just some of the quick things, quick rundown on how I'm trying to save money out here and uh, get more money back into the account at the end of the trip. So let me know what you guys do. I'm always open for more recipes, uh, more options, and uh, we'll see you on the road. We have made it to clear Clear Creek RV in Silverdale, Washington. 
and they have been extremely friendly this morning. Got me over here, told me to unhook, get my battery, everything out of it. Got paperwork inside that will get me out of here, back on the road as quick as possible. So here we are, and we're gonna get unhooked and see what the trip took. So we're getting the load checked in. They said it's gonna take about an hour, which uh, I appreciate having a, an idea up front instead of just sitting here till they decide they're done. But Clear Creek, Clear Creek RV in Silverdale, Washington. Uh, like I said, guy moving campers around in that, probably doing the check-in. Friendliest person I've run into so far. Um, helpful, seems anxious to get us out of here and out of his way, I guess. But the trip total uh, was 2,245 miles at 201 a mile. They're paying out 45, 12, 45 minus pulling fee and all the comm data fees we have to pay. They had $117.20 in tolls and permits, but I'll get that back. And then in fuel, uh, spent $1,293 in fuel, but I started off with almost full auxiliary tank after the Pennsylvania trip, so that helped out a lot. Um, spent $32.11 in def and saved $166 at the pump with our uh, com data discount. So that's always appreciated. But get this checked out. Then we're going, I'm going to go have um, breakfast with some friends of Wonderful Life that she knows from online out here. Um, my possible backhaul fell through. They had a dog that was needed to get to Colorado. Uh, their owner, a new owner, um, can't get up here to get them. So they were going to see if I might have taken them back. So I almost had a passenger for a couple days heading back, but that fell through. So it'll just be me alone with my thoughts again for another few days. Sometimes that's kind of scary going, you know, I know what's going on in there. But all in all, not a bad trip. Uh, there's not a whole lot of places to stay up here with a camper. I wound up actually staying away, staying about three hours away last night because I didn't want to get too deep up into the north part here and not have a place to stay. Uh, and last night was one of the sketchiest truck stops I've stayed at. So we're going to mark that one off the list as don't stay there again. So that was the trip. We're going to head back. Hopefully these contractors will have some stuff worked out and get that done and I can come out and start working regular again. So thanks for watching. If you made it till the end, stay safe, everybody.